Your book looks at some of the ways today's dictators are adapting and changing to the environment and how they're different from the dictators of the Cold War. Can you tell us how they're different? It's really never been harder to be a dictator. So if you're actually somehow able to keep your regime not just surviving but thriving, you're doing something right against all the forces that you sort of combat. And so for those that are more sophisticated, a little bit more intelligent about the ways they go about their repression, they find means that are more subtle forms of coercion. So, for example, they control the media, but they allow just enough free expression so that there are outlets for people who have complaints who can air them and get something off their chest. It's also useful for the regime to actually know who's corrupt and who's not. And you can only do that with a little bit of, a, of an independent press. Um, they devise laws that are broad and vague but then they apply them like a scalpel against th those that they deem a threat. So it's, it's much more about finding ways to, um, to mask the regime, to create a facade um, that allows you to even claim, and they all do, claim to be Democrats.